Administer the nitrous oxide gas. And I can hold him down if necessary. I'm small, but I'm strong. A <laughs> tooth is terrible to lose. It's something that I often use. I'd really rather not so what's a little rock. What is it, young man? It's no good, Grant. We can't understand you. I'll remove the mask. What's wrong, Grant? Tell us. What is it, young man? You look like you've seen a ghost. My God, my word, what just occurred? Nothing, Grant. Dr. McKeeby hasn't even started yet. Be still, my heart, I see art. What on earth are you talking about? These masks he had with lift baby grand with fingertips like frying pans. Every good idea I've ever had, I've had while milking a cow. Every good idea I've ever had till now. Grant, have you lost your mind? Such strength, such length, such wide finger spans. These massive hands were crushed in hands. Muscular and strong from pulling teeth. Beautiful on top and underneath. No flaw, no taint. I'm feeling quite faint. I must have these hands to paint. Please, Grant, you're making a fool of yourself. Mama and I just ignore him when he gets like this. Ten digits of remarkable size, and I can tell you moisturize. Cuticles and nails like dinner plates. Thumbs as big as packing freight. Such a lovely hand, and there's its twin. Think of all the lucky mouths that they can eat. My hands are my livelihood. Please do not assault them. Purple veins in a landscape of flesh. Hands that plant and plough and press and floss and drill 
and scrape off flash. Yes, these are my hands and I want them back. I think you're cutting off my circulation. Oh no, I would never do that. You see, these hands are what I've long desired to grab my soul and make me inspired. All I want is that you come and pose. All I want is when you come to bring those. So please forgive my lack of restraint. I'm begging you to be a saint. I must have these hands to paint. I must have these hands to paint. What on earth are you talking about? These hands go at the house, don't you see? Just lean back, Grant. You won't feel a thing. Nan, I think I'm going to need some help. Yes, yes, the house. Why don't you tell us all about the house? I saw it last week in Ellen, Iowa. I was there to talk about my art, and this young art team drove me around town in a dirty boy. <laughs> yes. Is that so? Tell us more. Hop in, Mr. Wood. My name is John Sharp. They asked me to drive you around Eldon so I could show you whatever there is to see around here. We're all so honored to have you here this weekend, Mr. Wood. Call me Grant. Gosh, Mr. Wood, I don't think I could. I'm just a college student, and you're- Just a little older than you. 20 years, actually. Even so, call me Grant. OK, Grant. Well, we really appreciate you coming here to talk about art. It's uh, wonder wonderful what Mr. Ronan has been doing here. Edward is a friend from Cedar Rapids. He owns a small gallery there and wants to bring art to small towns to spread it around, like fertilizer. Oh, I, I know. I've been in his gallery many times. I'm an art student at the University of Iowa. I heard you studied in Europe? I lived in Paris a couple years, but I realized that all of the really good ideas I'd ever had came to me while I was milking a cow. So I came back to Iowa. Gosh, that's such a good story. It is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, stop the car. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, everything's right. Reverse, reverse. I don't understand. <laughs> Look at that. What can it mean? It's the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. What are you talking about? That gothic window. What window? On that farmhouse. So inappropriate, it's utterly sublime. What kind of person could have perpetrated such a crime? Did a goth cut a swath through Eldon, a town no standards of building are upheld in? What were they thinking or drinking to build a window from the Middle Ages here in Iowa? <laughs> well, I guess that's the Dibbles for you. The Dibbles? Yeah, they built it. Folks call it the Dibble House. The Dibble House. <laughs> Wonderful. What is a Dibble? <laughs> Quick, I need to scribble. Um, here's this old envelope. Perfect. Tell me everything you know about that house. Well, it, it was built in 1882 by Charles Dibble. He owned the livery stable or worked on the railroad. We're not too sure. Uh, he lived there with his wife and eight children. Eight children? How frightening. They built the staircase too small, so they had to hoist furniture up to the second story through the Gothic window. There's a hinge on it, so it opens up like a hayloft. They ordered it from the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Sensational. 
Not for the Dibbles. Ugh. They lost the house in 1898 for failure to pay taxes to the government. Since then, there have been many owners. No one lives there now, but folks around here still call it the Dibble House. As well they should. <laughs> Who lived in this house? This cross between a shack and a church. Who lived in this house? What sort of pigeons perched on this perch? It's so exciting for me to observe how you create art, Mr. Wood. If you figure out how I do it, let me know. <laughs> ah, the Dibbles. Who lived in this house? Perhaps it was a farmer and his wife. Who lived in this house? What kind of inmates were imprisoned here for life? Perhaps a country lawyer. White stony and stentorian who lived here with his lady, officiously Victorian. Perhaps a foolish couple, boys as a and boring, who lived a quiet life here, practicing their snoring. <laughs> You're so funny, Mr. Wood. But like I said, the man who lived here owned a livery stable and- Please, John, I don't want facts. I want art. Who lived in this house? This cardboard house profoundly overwrought. Who destroyed this house? With the medieval window that they bought. From Susan Robot. In a Decisive building that only needs a steeple to be a place of worship for indecisive people. <laughs> house. Perhaps they did the best with what they had. People who were good, who couldn't help it if their taste was bad. Who lived in this house? This empty and unusual chateau. Who lived in this house? Very long ago. Something deep inside me needs to know. Dr. McKeevy will let you have some candy on the way out. Those hands, your hands, so beefy, so quaint. I won't allow one word of complaint. I must have these hands to paint. I must have these hands to <laughs> That must be the gas talking. <laughs> No, I'm afraid he's always like this. Grant, pull yourself together and let the good doctor go. He has other patients waiting in the next room, I'm sure. But don't you see, these hands go with the house. What house? The nut house. The dibble house. OK, now he's just gone off the deep end. No, no, the house in Eldon, Iowa, the simple little farmhouse with the enormous Gothic window. Those hands belong to the kind of man who would have built that house. Should we telephone your mother? That won't be necessary. Unfortunately, I think I understand my brother. He wants you to pose for a painting, probably in front of some house. 
Pose? Like the Mona Lisa? Yes, exactly. Only male and in overalls. I've been searching for the right subject to enter into the competition at the Art Institute of Chicago. The deadline is in three weeks. Oh, that's true. Grant nearly won it the past two years. I just need to find something more powerful, more universal that will speak to the viewer and say, hello, I think we know each other, don't we? And this is it. Why don't you calm down and tell Dr. McKeeby what you have in mind? I want you to pose as a strong, upright, virtuous American standing proudly in front of his house in small town Iowa. A gentleman farmer. Grant, I'm a professional. I do not pose. Please, Dr. McKeeby, this competition could change my life. I'm sorry, Grant. You'll have to find someone else. There is no one else. It's you and your hands. Absolutely not. Please, good doctor. If not for me, then do it for Mama and Nan. If I win the Chicago competition, I could move us out of our tiny loft apartment and into a home somewhere. You recall we live above the carriage house at Turner Mortuary. I wish I could help you, but I'm nearing retirement and I can't risk any controversy. I'll understand if you find another dentist. No, it's you I want. There's no one else. And how can I you? Stop this behavior immediately. Oh my, I'm so sorry. What am I doing? I'm such a fool sometimes. That's why they call it laughing gas. <laughs> Please forgive me. I'll wait for you outside. I did not intend to upset him. I'm sorry, Nan. Don't be. <laughs> My brother is very strange. Just ask my mama. Everything with him is wild imagination and drama. From the overalls to the farmer boots, to the kerchief so casually tucked, as if it had just recently been plucked, to wipe a brow while on a plow, and as for milking a cow, the first I ever heard of it is now. Just as likely he built a sow. I hope you're not trying to make me change my mind. Of course not, Doctor. I just want you to understand. My brother is very strange. We lost our daddy when Grant was ten. He hasn't quite been right since then. We sold the farm and moved to a town. Pass me the cotton balls. They perform scenes from Miss Estrato, a classical cantata, and his palms were painted red from the enacting a stigmata. It's good that he does painting and makes sculpture out of rubble. He may never be successful, but he keeps him out of trouble. Please pass the alcohol. My brother is very strange. And like all people who are strange, you keep hoping that he will change. But one thing I have heard is true. They never do. They never do. I'm sorry, Nan. 
I think my next patient just arrived. Please, think about posing for Grant. I will think about it. But I can tell you now, the answer will still be no. Excited to watch a real artist at work. And in his natural habitat, a cramped garret apartment shared by three people and legions of mice. Just tell me what to do. Wonderful. I want the easel over there, set out the paints, and prepare the palette. And fill these jars with rinseed oil and turpentine. I'll set up the scene. <laughs> this place is amazing, but what's that bed sheet sprung up for? That's no bed sheet. That's a theater curtain. The community theater performs plays up here, though there are usually more people in the cast than the audience. This is the cat's meow, costume, props, and makeup. Yes, we're a bunch of happy thespians. Oh, Grant, I always get so nervous when you have a painting party. It's not a party, Mama. I'm making art. Must you? Why must you do art? Art just isn't smart. You paint a scene for the critics to demean and write something reprehensible. Why not do something sensible? I teach school, Mama. That's sensible. Yes, but school teachers are always underpaid. Why must you teach school? Is there some unwritten rule that an artist spent his day teaching for no pay and a job that's indispensable? Why not do something sensible? Mama, I'm an artist. Art is who I am. Art is what I do. Since I was a boy, I do. Mama, I'm an artist. I was born this way. I didn't have a say. Which reminds me of a subject we should probably discuss one day. Oh, Grant. I don't understand what you're talking about half the time. It's probably just as well. Jars full, easels up. What should I do next? The paint desires to live on the palette. Open up the tubes and give them a nice squeeze, won't you? Yes, Mr. Wood. Call me Grant. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, these, are, these tubes look old and dried out. I have a brand new art kit. These tubes are not dried out. They're just experienced. <laughs> Now, banking is something sensible. People always need to stash their cash. And Barbary is also sensible. Someone always needs to trim their mustache. And medicine is very sensible. Someone always needs a pill or to have a spleen removed. But we're living in a garret and we all have to share it and it's very hard to bear it so the point I'm making you've already proved mama where's that cameo that I brought you from Italy well it's not more than 10 feet away I'm sure find it please and put it on with my brick rack apron but a fancy cameo doesn't go with a farm apron exactly now please find it you promised to pose for me all right just don't make me look so old. Like that painting of me with the Sansevieria plant. This plant is my favorite. And you made both of us look very long in the tooth. I promise. Now please get ready. Why is it you paint? That's not one complaint. You sign your name, then put it in a frame to hang on a wall in a big empty hall where strangers come and gawk while other painters gawk so that when you pass away, a criminal will say that your work is finely fensible. It's also incomprehensible. Why not do something sensible? How did I look? 
gothic. I never know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Oh, get it? <gasps> Dr. McKeevy? Hattie? Shouldn't you be drilling cavities? Saturday is my day off. Your son and daughter convinced me to come and help out. Though why you gave me these bin overalls to wear, I can't imagine. I brought my dental smock in case you change your mind. Whistler painted his mother. Why not paint your dentist? What is he talking about? I'm going to be the artist's model today. But I'm his model today. You both are. What? what? And you're married. What? what? I'm painting a farmer and his wife in front of their carpenter gothic home in small town Iowa. No, 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 absolutely not. I cannot be caught in such a foolish plot. No, 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 not on your life. I will not play her husband. I will not play his wife. No, 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 I'd rather be shot. I completely understand. Now stand on this spot. Did you to use my face for your news? Which brushes will you use? No, 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 no. I must insist. It's a painting, not a tryst. Now just raise your wrist. No, 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 no. I tell you I refuse. But if I were to pose, did I wear the right shoes? I'm painting your face, not your feet. Now, if you'll just... I'm sorry, Grant. <gasps> I'm a married man and a servant Adventist. I must honor my vows as a Christian and a dentist. Fetch the chair and put it over there where the morning light will hit his face just right. A sit, but the seat, this won't hurt a bit. Are you sure? I'm proud of you. I'd like that molar you took out. No, 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 do, do you, you not know, know that word? Perhaps, Perhaps you haven't heard. heard. I will not sit and permit my reputation to be slurred. I don't think you'll be deterred. This, this is simply absurd. absurd. I can't do it. I'm, I'm a respectable member of this community. You will not embarrass me this way. There's muscle in it. I will not do it. But, doctor, I cannot replace those hands or that face with its brave and manly scowl like a constipated owl. Um, well. Can you, my mama, with your lovely iron jaw like a fierce mother bear with an injured paw? I swear upon an artist's oath, I absolutely need you both. No, 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 there simply is no way we cannot portray a couple small town rules. Should I put away the tools? No, 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 we're not on display. So sophisticated luck is in the city. No, 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 a thousand times no. All I ask is don't make me look pretty. This looks good, but I need to make one change. Dr. McKeevy, I need to replace your glasses with these. What's the difference? These are round and yours are hexagonal. But then I won't be able to see. No, but I will. This pose is still missing something. John, go get a shovel from the theater. Okay. What's going on here? The usual insanity. Art is going on here. Where else would it go? No, Grant, I, I can't do it. I cannot pretend to be the wife of our dentist. I'd never be able to show my face again at the Piggly Wiggly or Smulikoff's. Mama, please. 
I need you. Posterity needs you. Well, I don't need posterity, and I don't need the humiliation. You'll just have to find someone else to pose. <laughs> don't even think about it. Please, Nan, I need you. Posterity needs you. I will not pretend to be Dr. McKeeby's wife. He's twice my age. I will look like a fool or some kind of prisoner bride. No, no, I promise no one would ever think you were his bride. What does that mean? I mean she would be your daughter, not your wife. Oh, his daughter. Like in the farmer's daughter jokes. No, Grant, no. I will not be the subject of a dirty little joke. Is this a dirty picture? It most certainly is not. It's as sanitary as your dental pick. No, I'm sorry, Grant. I will not subject myself to the scrutiny of the ages. I'm sorry, you'll just have to find someone else. But who, Nan? Who? I'll do it. <laughs> the profs at the University of Iowa will love it. I may even get extra credit. No, absolutely not. This is a bridge too far. I can't pose with a man for a wife. People might think I'm theatrical. John, please go take that off. Okay. I'm sorry, Grant. I'm leaving. No, please, Dr. McKeeby, you have to pose. This means everything to me. I know the Chicago exhibition is an important opportunity for you, but I'm sorry, Grant. You'll simply have to find someone else. No, it has to be you. It has to be you. Why? Because you look like Merville. Who? My father. Grant, you're right. Yes, I see it now. And those are Papa's eyeglasses. You saved them.
certainly grant. I would be honored. Thank you, Dr. McKeevy. Thank you. I can't, honey. Especially now. I understand, Mama. Oh, all right. Is this what you wanted? No, that's wrong. There's a rake back there somewhere. Okay. I don't think we look very modern. You're not. I'm going to paint you as you were in 1891, standing resolutely in front of your new home. Whatever you say. Dr. McKeevy, I want you standing, not sitting. You're a tall man. I want a tall painting. And Nan, I want you standing slightly behind your father, looking at him obediently. You don't look obedient. You look ill. I'm sorry, Grant. I'm not one of your actors. That's why you're perfect. How about looking off in the distance somewhere, as if a bear were going to come over a hill and eat your family? Like this? Perfect. I couldn't find a rake, but will this work? That pitchfork is so skinny it couldn't pitch a feather. It's just a theater prop. I could keep on looking. No, we're losing the light. It'll have to do. Please give it to Dr. McKeevy. And Mama, please do Nan's hair up in a bun. Oh, oh, organ music. I hate funerals. It means someone has died. That's why I paint, Mama. <laughs> That's why I paint. <clears throat> Waiting for their souls to print on 
Oh, oh, oh.